June 13, 2025. 200 Israeli aircraft vanish from radar screens. Target? Iran's nuclear heartland, 1,500 kilometers away. Tehran's Russian S-300 systems? Silent. Advanced air defenses? Blind. Every single jet returns home untouched. Zero losses. The weapon? America's most lethal gift to its closest ally. This isn't just about fighter jets. This is about how one nation rewrote the rules of Middle Eastern warfare overnight, and why enemies now think twice before making a move. Israel didn't just buy fighter jets from America. They got something no other nation on Earth possesses. The United States broke its own rules and handed Israel the keys to technology so advanced that even close American allies can't touch it. Modifications that turn stealth into invisibility. Weapons that strike before radar even blinks. Electronic warfare systems that shut down enemy defenses like flipping a light switch. The transformation was devastating. Since 2018, these jets have flown thousands of combat missions, 15,000 flight hours, not a single loss. They've struck deep inside Iran, eliminated threats in Syria, hit targets in Yemen over a thousand miles away, places where conventional aircraft wouldn't survive five minutes. Israel went from regional air power to absolute regional air dominance, overnight. If you've ever wondered how modern military technology really works in combat, type yes in the comments right now. And stick around because what comes next will blow your mind. Here's what most people don't understand. When America sells military hardware, there are ironclad rules. You buy the equipment, you follow our instructions, you never touch the internal systems. That's the deal for Britain, for Japan, for every ally. No exceptions. Until Israel. In 2010, Israel approaches the Pentagon with a request to buy the F-35. But they don't just want to purchase jets. They demand something unprecedented, the right to rip open the aircraft's core systems and install their own technology, their own weapons, their own electronic warfare suites, everything. The Pentagon's response? Absolutely not. The F-35 source code is the most classified technology in American military history. Nobody gets access. End of discussion. But Israel didn't back down. They explained their reality in blunt terms. We're surrounded by enemies who want us eliminated. Iranian proxies with advanced weapons are on our borders. Russian defense systems protect our adversaries. We face threats that evolve monthly, not yearly. We can't wait six months for Pentagon approval every time we need an upgrade. We need the ability to adapt in real time or we don't survive. The United States faced a choice. Lose Israel as a partner in the most volatile region on Earth or break every rule in the defense playbook. After intense debate at the highest levels, they chose option two. In 2016, the first F-35I, Adir, landed in Israel. Adir means mighty one in Hebrew, and that name was about to become terrifyingly accurate. Israel immediately began the most extensive modification program ever allowed on American military aircraft. Wings manufactured in Tel Aviv, electronic warfare systems built by Elbit systems replacing American ones entirely. Israeli weapons integrated into internal bays, command systems tailored specifically for Israeli military doctrine. This wasn't an American fighter with minor tweaks. This was a revolutionary hybrid, American stealth technology fused with Israeli combat experience and innovation. The transformation from standard F-35 to F-35I Adir created something more lethal than either nation could have built alone. So what exactly did Israel change? And why did it transform them into a regional superpower? First, electronic warfare. Every standard F-35 comes with excellent American-made systems. Israel said, that's not good enough for what we face. They replace the entire electronic warfare suite with Elbit Systems technology that does something extraordinary. 
it creates digital decoys that confuse enemy radar. It jams multiple frequencies simultaneously. It detects threats from every direction and responds automatically before pilots even know danger exists. Here's what that means in actual combat. An enemy radar turns on to track an aircraft. The F-35I detects it instantly. Before that radar can lock on, before any missile can launch, the Israeli jet is already jamming the signal, spoofing the system, making itself invisible. That's not just stealth. That's active electronic dominance. The difference between hiding and controlling the entire battlefield. Second, range. The standard F-35 has roughly 700 miles of combat range. Good for European operations. Useless for Israel. The distance to critical Iranian targets? Over a thousand miles one way. Israel needed jets that could fly deep into Iran, complete their mission, and return home without refueling. Aerial refueling tankers are slow, vulnerable targets in contested airspace. So America and Israel developed something revolutionary together conformal fuel tanks and external drop tanks that maintain stealth characteristics. These tanks can be jettisoned before entering hostile territory, keeping the radar signature invisible when it matters most. Result? Israeli F-35s can now fly 1,700 kilometers without refueling. They can reach anywhere in Iran and return safely. That single modification transformed Israel's strike capability from regional to strategic. Third, weapons integration. Israel developed its own precision weapons over decades. Spice-guided bombs, Python air-to-air -air missiles, Delilah cruise missiles, all needed to fit inside internal weapons bays to maintain stealth. Israel made it happen, creating a weapons package no other F-35 operator possesses. But here's the game changer. Israel became the only nation to fly F-35s in beast mode during actual combat. That's when you hang massive weapons on external pylons, sacrificing stealth for overwhelming firepower. When air defenses are already destroyed and you need maximum destructive power, beast mode delivers. Israeli F-35s have carried huge JDAM bombs externally, obliterated hardened targets, and returned safely. No other country has done this in real combat. The transformation was complete. Israel took an already advanced aircraft and turned it into something enemies literally cannot defend against with current technology. May 2018. Israel becomes the first nation ever to use F-35s in combat. The target? Iranian infrastructure inside Syria. Russian S-400 systems, among the world's best air defenses, are active and scanning. Israeli F-35Is cross the border. Syrian radar sees nothing. Russian systems detect nothing. Targets destroyed. Jets return home. Syria and Russia learn about the strike from news reports. The stealth superpower had arrived. May 2021. Iranian drones headed toward Israel. F-35Is intercept and destroy them far beyond Israeli borders. First air-to-air -air kills by F-35s anywhere in the world. October 2023, a Houthi cruise missile launched from Yemen over a thousand miles away. An F-35I tracks it, intercepts it, destroys it. First cruise missile kill by an F-35 globally. But the real test came in October 2024. Iran launched 180 missiles at Israel. Israel's response? Operation Days of Repentance. F-35Is led strike packages hitting 20 locations across Iran, Iraq, and Syria. Air defense batteries eliminated. UAV factories destroyed. Missile facilities demolished. The jets penetrated the most heavily defended airspace on the planet. Advanced Russian systems that were supposed to detect stealth aircraft saw nothing until bombs were falling. Every aircraft returned safely. Then came June 2025, Operation Rising Lion, the largest Israeli air operation against Iran in history. 200 aircraft, dozens of them F-35Is. Mission, strike Iran's underground nuclear facilities and military command centers.
These are hardened bunkers, protected by multiple layers of air defense, buried deep underground, supposedly invulnerable. F-35Is went in first. They flew 1,500 kilometers into Iranian territory. They hit Natanz, Iran's largest uranium enrichment facility. They struck Khandab and Khorramabadad. Precision munitions penetrated bunkers that were designed to withstand conventional attacks. S-300 radar systems were destroyed before they could engage. Iranian fighters never even scrambled, because by the time Tehran realized they were under attack, the first wave had already finished its mission. The numbers tell the transformation story. 15,000 combat flight hours, thousands of sorties, zero losses. Not one F-35I shot down, damaged, or even seriously threatened. Israel went from having capable air power to having unstoppable air dominance. This transformation changed everything about Middle Eastern power dynamics. For decades, regional warfare followed patterns, build air defenses, develop countermeasures, back and forth endlessly. The F-35I shattered that cycle completely. It didn't move the goalpost. It removed the entire playing field. Consider Iran's position. They spent billions on Russian air defense systems, S-300s, TORs, Panziers, top-tier equipment. None of it mattered. Israeli jets flew through Iranian airspace like ghosts, struck at will, and departed unscathed. If your most sophisticated defenses can't even detect threats, how do you defend anything? You can't, and every hostile actor in the region knows it now. This creates deterrence beyond anything conventional forces achieve. Israel doesn't need to threaten anymore. The capability speaks for itself. Every enemy now understands Israeli air power can reach them anywhere, anytime, with or without warning. That changes calculations at every level. It makes aggression exponentially riskier. Britain's top military officer, Admiral Tony Radekin, publicly confirmed Israel's use of F-35s against Iran and called it a demonstration of the disproportionate advantage of fifth-generation aircraft. This wasn't just praise. It was acknowledgement that warfare fundamentally changed. Traditional defenses simply cannot counter modern stealth when employed by skilled forces. Regional rivals are responding desperately. Arab nations lobby for their own F-35 access. Turkey wants back into the program. Everyone recognizes that air superiority now requires fifth-generation capability. But even if others eventually acquire F-35s, they won't get what Israel has. The modifications, the weapons integration, the customization, that's unique. America granted Israel something it won't give anyone else. Israel currently operates 46 F-35Is across three squadrons. By 2030, that becomes 75 aircraft. For a small country, that's a dominant fleet. And these aren't standard F-35s. Every single one is upgraded with Israeli technology. Together, they form the most advanced tactical air force in the entire Middle East. No other nation comes remotely close. This isn't just about selling weapons. It's about trust and mutual benefit that transforms both nations. America gains an incredibly capable ally in a volatile region. Israel serves as a proving ground for American technology, providing real-world combat data that can't be replicated in testing. When Israeli F-35s successfully penetrate advanced defenses, American engineers learn what works. When tactics evolve in actual combat, American doctrine improves. This makes both nations stronger. For Israel, American support means survival. The F-35I gives them an edge that compensates for being vastly outnumbered. Surrounded by larger, hostile nations, Israel needs every advantage. The F-35I delivers that advantage. It's not just a weapon system, it's the cornerstone of national security. The industrial partnership matters too. Israeli companies manufacture F-35 components. Wings are built in Israel. This creates jobs, maintains expertise, and ensures Israel can service its fleet independently. 
Unlike other F-35 operators who depend entirely on American maintenance, Israel handles everything domestically. That independence is crucial during wartime. American defense companies benefit as well. Lockheed Martin and others work directly with Israeli firms, learning from Israeli innovations in electronic warfare and tactics. Some lessons get incorporated into future F-35 upgrades, benefiting all operators. It's genuine two-way collaboration where both sides improve. The recent Iran operations proved this partnership's value beyond doubt. Nuclear facilities set back years, military command disrupted, air defense networks crippled, all accomplished without American forces directly involved, without American casualties, without lengthy political debates. Israel's F-35 strikes achieved objectives that would have required massive American commitment otherwise. The transformation from capable regional air force to unstoppable stealth superpower happened in less than a decade. Before the F-35I, Israel could strike neighboring countries, but deep strikes into heavily defended Iranian territory were high risk, possibly suicidal. After the F-35I, everything changed. Israel can now hit any target in the Middle East with near impunity. Underground nuclear facilities in Iran? Reachable. Military command centers protected by Russian air defenses? Vulnerable. Targets over a thousand miles away? Accessible. The transformation gave Israel strategic reach that only superpowers traditionally possessed. The psychological impact is enormous. Enemies know Israeli air power is virtually unstoppable with current technology. That knowledge prevents conflicts before they start. A small nation surrounded by enemies became the dominant air power across an entire region. That's the definition of a regional superpower. The transformation is complete. Israel took American genius and made it even deadlier. They proved that when democracies stand together and share their most advanced capabilities, smaller nations can dominate entire regions. The F-35I Adir isn't just a weapon system. It's proof of what happens when the world's most powerful nation breaks its own rules for an ally that needs to survive. Right now, it's the most feared aircraft in Middle Eastern skies. If this opened your eyes to how modern military technology really works, hit that like button and subscribe for more real stories about the forces keeping the free world safe.